This video is part of a series about the 1946 short story, A Logic Named Joe, by Murray Leinster. Last video we talked about the story itself, and now we are going to analyze other aspects such as the technology. Make sure you catch the first video. By this time, you're already familiar with the technology that appears in this rich universe. And here we have a few more details. Besides logics, a remarkable piece of technology, especially for that time, the story mentions circuits. And not ordinary circuits, but a new invention, Carson circuits, connected by relays. This video is not for electric engineers, so let's get to the basics. A relay is an electrically op operated switch. In the case of the story, the kind of switch is used in telephone equipment and early computers. These were slow and large components, and while they were the fastest kinds of devices available at the time, they would not have been fast enough to perform work at great speeds and without great cost. An electrical circuit is a network consisting of a closed loop giving a return path for the current. An electrical network is an interconnection of electrical components such as batteries, resistors, inductors, capacitors, switches, transistors. You might think of a circuit as something that looks like this. Uh, but that's a printed circuit board used in modern personal computers. And I don't think that's what Leinster had in mind. You see, in 1946, computing was in its infancy, so the author bases his technology on electrical engineering. In one part of the story, scientists ask a logic how to produce cold electron emission to make better vacuum tubes which suggests logics and Carson circuits use a more advanced kind of vacuum tubes. But he could have foreseen the advent of the transistor, invented one year after the publication of the story. We have computer servers, here referred to as tanks. They store information on data plates which seem to be the kind of disk platters that were invented in the 1950s with systems like IBM's hard disk drive. Okay, besides that, we have to mention computers working in a network, which is the case of when Joe commands other logics by remote control. In 1946, computers only existed as massive projects, such as Colossus, used by the British in World War II, and Mark I and ENIAC at Harvard. Transistor computers would only appear in 1953, and ARPANET would not go online for another 23 years. And home technology was only beginning. But the author predicted personal computers in the home used by ordinary people in normal daily activities, connected to a central server and to other home computers. Steve Jobs was lauded for seeing a market for home computers in the late 1970s, but Leinster foresaw that nearly a decade before Jobs was even born. He also got right the part of internet that as an endless source of information and how this could be relevant in the life of everybody. Moreover, the information doesn't have to just exist, but also to be properly indexed and selected, otherwise it won't be usable. And we also get people communicating with one another by means of computers. Another interesting aspect brought forward by the writer is the existence of artificial intelligence and how it could be used online. Nowadays, algorithms are constantly present, for example, in social media, and this affects our lives on a daily basis. Finally, we had a glimpse at what happens when information has a wrongful use and that results in crimes. 
We even get an idea of the occurrence of current cybercrimes such as hacking, invasion of privacy, doxing, which is the unauthorized publication of someone's personal information. Few science fiction writers try to predict what the future will be. In fact, I don't think that's the purpose of science fiction. Mostly, writers try to tell stories about universal themes, like our dependence on our tools and the specter of losing control to them. And overall, Murray Leinster managed to see further down the line than most, and a logic named Joe seems to have understood the times in which we live today. And of course, it's not fair to nitpick about uh, prediction missteps in a 1946 science fiction work. But since it gets so close in so many aspects, just as an analytical exercise, let's take a look at the aspects not present in the story. The first one is the fact that the concept of software is absent. The process is always explained as a result of pure hardware, such as logics, relays, circuits, and tanks. Also, the World Wide Web is not mentioned. The idea that we can browse through pages now, pages with text and images, and there's no mouse or graphic interface. In the world of logic, we can only visualize text on a screen and make video phone calls. Also, in this fiction world, there is no exchange of written messages, such as emails and instant messaging, only person-to-person -person video phone conversations, and no concept of the Internet as a public square, with forums like Twitter and social media. I find it particularly interesting that I first read this story back in the early 2000s. Some details were considered wrong by me, proven to be right in the time. First, logics are always online and the moment that they are turned on. This is wrong, I thought, because you have to dial up. <laughs> However, now internet connection has improved dramatically and will likely get even more reliable. Besides, we don't name computers as a PC is an environment, not, not an entity. And an AI is not limited to a specific computer, and it can be accessed by any machine. Well, now we, have, we name AIs, and they can be connected to a specific piece of hardware, which is the case of Siri and Alexia, except that anyone can have, uh, can have an Alexia and talk to Siri. Leinster presents a world in which technology is just too perfect. The answers are 100% accurate, relevant and helpful, and logics make no information mistakes. It's not clear how the information is fed into the tank, it, it's simply there. And since logics are incapable of lying, there's never fake news. The entire network and functioning of logics is controlled exclusively by logics, not human programmers. The human mind is simply too limited for that. But perhaps one day, in a more distant future, things will be like this. All we know is that, for the moment, all the algorithms do the grunt work of selecting and classifying vast amounts of data according to pre-programmed cartoons criteria and ultimately are limited by the will of the programmers and political ideology of the people who run big tech companies. They are far from being as helpful and benevolent as Joe. Where a logic named Joe really inspires, though, is not with its vision of the placement of technology, but in the ways in which it could be used both for the benefit and detriment of society. Joe is not a villain, he is an evil or menacing, and that's evidenced by his ordinary and colloquial name. Joe just wants to help, and he helps in ways mankind is not prepared to handle. Joe is helpful to the point of enabling man's worst qualities, 
This too is eerily prescient as the modern internet has proven to be both a great enabler of education as well as a way to expose and indulge our worst tendencies. Ordinary logics already grant many wishes, but what Joe grants are the forbidden ones, the monsters of the id, as they are called in the 1956 science fiction movie Forbidden Planet. Leinster shows a reality in which computing takes up a central role in the day-to-day -day life of the average family, but also in the way which having so much knowledge at our fingertips can lead us into the worst parts of our collective psyche. Therefore, it's highly symbolic that, in the end, the repairman hides Joe in the basement. What makes a logic named Joe so fascinating is not just what he got uncannily right, but how much Jenkins understood about people and the way they interact with machines. Great works of science fiction examine not only the roles in which science will change people's lives, but also isolate the best qualities of the human experience and study how the human condition will react and endure when new experiences are presented and new frontiers are opened. For that, we can say Murray Leinster achieved in a short story what other writers perhaps never did or took a long time to accomplish. Don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. You can use the comment section to leave constructive criticism and suggestions. And make sure you catch the first video of the series, the one about the story plot. In the next episode, we'll be talking about the impact of some of Murray Leinster's ideas on the world in which we live today. Don't miss it. See you all then.